So, um, as Frederic told us in the introduction, one of the big themes here tonight is art and trust. I think Yesim and I have prepared some other topics we can talk about. At some point, of course, we will invite you to join in the discussion as well. But let's first give these people um, the floor and talk about can we trust ourselves? Can we trust our own eyes? Can we trust the artist? And can the artist trust their own creations? So be, before we get uh, that deep, uh, let's start with the basics, uh, with Anna, of course. Uh, we know that, uh, Anna, you're coming uh, from a family with a lot of artists and, or, not uh, what uh, uh, artists. So, uh, especially your father, Zaza Urushatze, is a very well-known director, especially for his last film, Tangerines. And so can you tell us a bit, uh, and since this film is about uh, an artist woman who, and the film is also about her familial re relationships, can you tell us a bit about your background, uh, your road to, uh, for becoming an artist? Uh, oh, I, I don't really, I don't know, perceive myself as an artist. I don't know why, but um, yeah, uh, well, my uh, father is a director. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I didn't really think about alternative job or whatever. Um, I, s I wanted from the very beginning, since I was a child, because uh, I looked up to my father and uh, whatever he uh, did, uh, I wanted to do the same. So uh, maybe uh, I could have done other things too, but I have not really thought about them. And life is too short, so I was like, yeah, directing. And uh, I follow this direction. So did you go to film school or? Yes, I did, uh, um, t in Georgia. Like. And uh, can you, say that you were, I mean, do you have a special relationship with Georgian cinema or, or with Georgian art or was it more per personal? Uh? Um, oh, well, uh, I, I like, like, uh, I have my favorites in Georgian uh, cinematography, uh, but uh, um, while making, you, you're asking about while making this. Uh, no, on the road that, uh, th that took you here, let's say. I mean, uh, other than your father, uh, yeah. did you have? Uh, mm, yeah, uh, yes, uh, yes, I have favorite directors and their films uh, that I look up to. So. But um, mm, mm, uh, while this, uh, um, yeah, uh, what was the question? Mm, I, I so, so, I mean, uh, we're also a bit curious since, the f since this film is also a bit about uh, how the artists uh, make the makes her or his uh, personal life part of the part of her creation uh, we're a bit curious so did your father support you probably so and uh, the film's main actress not uh, Murvanitze by the way she's Tristan, here yeah, with yeah, us yeah, yeah. Uh, really shall we yeah, she give her an applause uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was mm. yeah, she is here Since she's playing in your father's next film, I guess your collaborators. So, on the contrary to the character in the film, you were much supported by your family, uh. I guess. <laughs> yes, uh, sure. Uh, like uh, my father is more excited than I am about all these uh, things that are uh, happening. I don't know festivals and stuff. He's like, ah, and um, yeah, uh, he of course he did uh, support me, but uh, um, throughout the creative process that it's called, I uh, know. Actually, he didn't uh, initiate it because he knew that I didn't want it because, you know, it's first thing, pers it was first film and while well, first film you want to do it all by yourself and stuff like that and, and not even ask questions and stuff. So he wasn't really mm, interfering. And uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, Nata uh, has played before. Um, uh, like I, I got to know Nata uh, through my father. Um, and actually, I got to know uh, the staff, all the staff, like all the crew, uh, nearly all the crew, crew, crew uh, through my father. So yeah, he played a <laughs> huge role. So Anna, at some point in your film, fairly early on, Manana is reading her 
a, 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 a transcript of her novel to her to her family, which is her first audience. Since your film is also maybe partly based or inspired by or extracted mm -hmm. from some observations and experiences you had, was your family also your first audience? Because your mother is also someone who wrote, I think, and your sister is also a published mm, author. Uh -huh. uh, um, uh, well, mm, uh, first was my sister. Uh, uh, when I wrote the script, I m made her read it. Uh, then, uh, then, then, uh, sure, my family. Uh, but uh, um so, yeah, w were they your f your first audience? Yes. yes and yes. how did they respond? Did they oh, recognize really themselves? Oh, really? They they liked it more than I do. But <laughs> really. <laughs> so, is that something? Because that also introduces the theme of trust. I think when you say they liked it more than I did uh, in the film, it's the other way around. Um, uh, you Do know, you I need don't the oh, trust of others in order to uh, appreciate yourself as an artist or to be able to create? Um, mm, you know, I don't really uh, mm, like. I don't really like to see. I, I don't see any connection between uh, this uh, film and me. Uh, like it's it, um, and bef between me and the protagonist. Uh, fortunately, uh, or unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, but uh, mm, you know, I don't really. Um, mm, um <laughs> Um, what was uh, and what did you ask? So Sorry. you don't see a connection between yourself and the protagonist, which maybe is you know only um, th you know everyone can see connections between other per like uh, other people. Like we are people, uh, we do some things uh, more or less. So of course some connections. Of course I see it, but and uh, of course I wrote script and it was writing process, like creating process. But uh, well, I don't uh, take it uh, too seriously. Like I I don't know. And um, of um, and um, also um, um, well, only connection I uh, see now, as I, I remember, uh, I can I see, uh, uh, is uh, um, the space. You need space uh, while writing. Uh, well, I don't like generalizing any topics, you know, because maybe someone doesn't need space. Maybe someone uh, is better writing with other people or collaborating. But um, me personally, I need yeah, I need some space and but uh, my creative process is very dull, like I'm doing nothing, just sitting and concentrating on the thing. Yeah. Okay. I don't walk around or I don't we'll uh, move around in other places or something. We'll get to talk about space a lot later on, but maybe let's extend the question to our other guests and Stephanie. Um, I mean, here are the books, Fitness and Statumtmeldungen, and they're your first novel was basically just based on your Facebook updates. So there's, is there a strong connection between you as a writer, you as a private person, and the Stefanie, who has a different uh, last name in the books? Yeah, uh, the connections uh, are obvious, and uh, um, I didn't uh, write it for uh, to, to publish a book. I, I wrote it for friends. I just use, use it as Facebook, so... Yet yeah, first, uh, in the beginning, I would say it was uh, very close to my real me, but now I got more and more a public person, so I, I don't know. If, uh, I see, uh, yeah, Verfremdung. Uh, I have more, uh, yeah, Gefühl für Verfremdung entwickelt. Uh, um, <laughs> if there's anyone in the audience who doesn't understand that, so Stephanie said that she. Sort for example, about other people, I wrote a lot about other people and uh, I got a lot of um, problems also because of that. Working, uh, I wrote a lot about working colleagues and um, I thought my first book uh, won't be... Uh, I, I didn't expect the success it had and uh, I thought no one will read it anyway, so I can write about everything. And yeah, I also wrote a lot about my family and I also stopped that, but yeah. But they, um, uh, it's very humoristic, so I always have this humoristic distance and irony and I can always say it's exaggeration, uh, exaggerating and it's a joke and um, uh, actually my mother, I, 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 read, I, I write a lot about her and she always comes to my readings and, and uh, laughs really loud and it's like part of the performance. So, no, yeah. so could you say <laughs> that you grew up in public? Yeah, somehow, yeah. Like a reality TV star or something. And then, when you just saw the film, you were with us in the audience. I mean, 
did you relate to anything you saw concerning the writing process? I mean, yeah, if you write like me, then yeah, um, or uh, yeah, I, I don't invent fairy tales. I, I, I have a, uh, yeah, I always write about things that are really happening and uh, yeah, so yeah, I sometimes also um, try to be aware that I'm not using things or situations or yeah, I always ask people if I can tell their stories and yeah. And yes, sometimes you, yes, you ask yourself, am I doing this uh, f because I want to do this or am I doing this because I want to have a good story to tell? Yeah. And what's the answer to that question? Both. I mean, I also want to experience funny stories. So, yeah. F yeah. Do you have a question? So, uh, Kleber, what's your uh, relationship with uh, personal, being personal? and telling the personal stuff or not yours is if it is like that yours is more concealed obviously because you use in your films you tell your stories in more uh, social structures mm -hmm. so we don't we can't guess the personal levels but what's your take uh, when you start to write a script uh, just a question, does your mom leave uh, comments on the comment section? No, no, she doesn't, yeah. But, uh, yeah, she she follows me on Facebook. Yeah. At first I just wrote a blog on the internet and no one knew that it was my blog, it was with a pseudonym. And, and then my mother somehow uh, found it, I don't know how, and I was just writing about her and her new boyfriend and that he... Okay, what am I telling you? Um, <laughs> that that there is Viagra all in the f all everywhere in the flat, and then she kept on reading and read a lot about my family. But she takes it with humor. I mean, in my family, we were making fun of each of another. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's always um, ex it, it's always complex because um, I I cannot imagine uh, writing things could be literature or film without uh, drawing from personal experience. It's, it's like bacon and eggs. I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it is what it is. And I remember when I did uh, my first film, Neighboring Sounds, um, there was, um, it's really about a family. Um, and of course, I knew this family. It wasn't my family, but it was a family that I interacted with for some years. And then of course I lost contact with them um, back in the 90s and and I made the film in 2010 the film was released in 2012 and sure enough some members of the family uh, it's not that they came to me but I heard that they were very angry uh, at me because of um, they recognized themselves in the film as much as I try to disguise each and every member uh, like uh, a guy would be a woman, uh, a woman would be a man, an old man would be a young man, but still um, they recognized uh, themselves in the film and and yeah, and then something when I was watching um, Scary Mother, when she keeps writing on her body, on, on her arm, and she keeps taking notes, and I, I think that's a very interesting image because when you, um, when I wrote about that family, uh, they and they got angry when the film was released. Um, they forgot one interesting aspect, which is uh, their f their story is also my story because I interacted with them. It's not like I'm uh, acting like some kind of vampire uh, and just drawing from from their you know their energy. I was actually there, and I was actually observing and living with them in some way. So it's my story also, and if they happen to be in the film, they just happen to be in the film because it's my story. So I think uh, there are so many layers, it's so complex, and, um, and it's one of the reasons I, I really like this film. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I was that also something you really wanted to express in your film, all these layers of reality, and I, I mean, we've 
seen all, all seen the film now, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about the different layers of reality that are in your film. If there are any, I felt like there's so many layers, dreams and ah. fantasy, ah. and and that's maybe a film about a book in search of an author. Yes. Ah, no, no, no. It's, it was just like um, as, uh, this film is uh, the plot is about creative process and that she's going through. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, um, mostly connected with dreams and you get ideas from dreams and. Uh, um, and it was like that, like yeah, it suited it. I don't know somehow. I, I guess this dreams and uh, half wake uh, awake uh, uh, state. Is it a puzzle? I mean, can we distinguish the different mm, um, layers? You know, uh, I think yes. Uh, I, th uh, I think. Uh, but mm, dream. Uh, well, what is dream and what is reality and stuff like that? Well, uh, t to me personally, it's not that mixed. You know, uh, I don't know uh, what uh, we don't really get to see her dreams. Uh, um, all is verbally uh, to me. I guess I don't know. Um, uh, maybe some someone um, for others, uh, it's it has a different impression. And uh, um, I it doesn't mean that mine uh, my answer is true or something. Like that. Uh, for to me, it's like. Um, there, all is told verbally, and it's somehow uh, the for audience to imagine something. I don't know. Maybe if we if they did do, uh, but um, yeah. I'm sure the people <laughs> in the audience will be wondering <laughs> what's being handed out here. That's vodka, and I actually think that there's also vodka for the audience, and I mean not just like outside afterwards at the party, but. If you want to drink not yet. somehow, <laughs> not yet, <laughs> it will come to you. So we will get drunk together and get into all these layers of uh, so reality. Prost to Anna's film, first film. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> no, not just mine, like all of all. <laughs> so uh, talking about personal stuff, real stuff or surreal stuff, which ideas, I mean, when someone sit down, even for writing a film review, f even for that, uh, tons of ideas come to your mind and you kind of have to elect. Which ones do you, do you trust? I mean, where's the line between autobiographical and authentic or a good one or a cliche? When do you know uh, or would you trust the most intuitive ideas or the more structured ones? Uh, and you three as artists seem to be have uh, different styles of expressions, uh, actually. Your film is more uh, between surreal and real and the painful process of creating. Kleber's is more in the mix with social structures. And Stefani is such a natural and fast expressionist. So can you tell us a bit uh, which ideas do you trust immediately? Well, I have a very simple uh, um, method, uh, which is uh, trust yeah, this uh, whatever feels right. Like whatever feels... Uh, your gut. <laughs> yeah, trust your gut. And it's like um, you uh, don't lose time and it's like... Uh, energy and it's like uh, yeah it's it should be that <laughs> without thinking like <laughs> it feels right yeah it's this <laughs> Clara, how, is that for you? how is that for you you go by gut feeling uh, yeah it, it's it is gut feeling and um, I mean it's fine to after the fact to intellectualize and try to understand what you did but but once when you're doing it it has to be it has to feel right basically um, you can't really think too much. I mean, it, it's basically um, hearing about a story or living a story or remembering something. And sometimes you remember something that did not happen, but could have happened, and maybe that should be in the film. Um, I have two very dear uncles, and um, one of them is uh, is an amazing storyteller. He's, uh, he's actually a retired... Uh, electrical engineer he he never <laughs> wrote or made he, he he did not have an artistic career but when i sit down with him and he tells me stories from the past of people he knew uh, it, 
I, 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 I always feel like uh, just leaving and going to the computer to write because the things he told me is it's literature and um, and that's how it works um, you don't really have to think too much you just have to remember the story because it was a great story Stephanie, how's that for you? Yeah, I'm also very intuitive, and uh, but um, yeah, I experienced when it feels right, then even uh, and uh, if, uh, then yeah, mm, uh, later when I think about it, I, I can also uh, in an intellectual um, way, ich meine rechtfertigen. Um, because I really like to do politically incorrect jokes and, and I'm never sure if I get, uh, is this a, f uh, a joke about racism or is this a racist joke, for example? And if it feels right and I think about it afterwards, then most of the time it's okay, um, yeah, even if I think about it, so yeah. Do you ever delete? I delete post? all the time, yeah, yeah. Since uh, before I didn't, but, but since so many people are following me, um, Sometimes I, I want to talk, uh, I want to tell something, and two minutes later I think, yeah, but not 10,000 people have to read it, so I delete it two but seconds later. Yeah. Do you, ever, do you ever show something before you post to someone or to friends? No, no, no. no. Uh, yeah. I get the likes, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, but I, dangerous. I, yeah, but, but it's somehow interesting with the likes because sometimes I, the best things I post, they get. They don't get a lot of likes, but they get more quality likes. I also have a, a different uh, system of value. More quality likes. Yeah, people I, I like and people who are doing things, I, uh, who are, I don't know, maybe artists themselves and producing stuff I like. And one like from them is like 20 likes from the... Yeah, people, other people. Great. Great. In likes. Yeah. I think we should sort of <laughs> wrap this subject up and go to space, but we have to confront you with one final quote by Fassbinder, of course, which is in this amazing book, which is also for sale outside and has lots of information about the films in the programs, but also some really good essays about the films. Um, and I want to ask all three of you to comment on this. I guess we've covered most of it. So Rainer Werner Fassbinder said, there is a very honest honesty and an almost honest honesty and a half honest honesty and an almost dishonest honesty and only then it's a lie. I don't always tell the whole truth, but I never actually lie. So we've been talking about autobiography, authenticity, authorship. So when do you allow yourself to lie in your work? We'll start with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's probably an impossible question to answer because I make films and films are fantasy. In, you know, fundamentally speaking, it's everything is it's just not true. It's uh, you shoot a scene and there are sixteen people holding lights and equipment around the two people in the scene. And but of course, the beauty, the beautiful thing about cinema is that even so, uh, it's all true. So once you understand that, um, I I'll I'll go along with Mr. Fassbinder. Uh, he actually took a very long way to basically say I do whatever the fuck I want you know that's basically what he said and uh, and I agree and I saw you sort of nodding in agreement I was nodding? I was nodding. Ah, no, no was I don't know maybe uh, you weren't <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, uh, mm, uh, ah, what is my opinion about um, what you know you it depends it depends what you mean about uh, what uh, you mean about asking about lies like uh, about stories or about emotions or about um, concrete si situations, like uh, I don't know, it's too general to answer. I think I don't know. I think Fassbinder is more or less talking about gradations in a narrative way, so about the story. Uh, well, but oh, sorry, I mean, you can extend it to any. No, y y I mean you. You can you can see a zombie film, and it could be more truthful than the news on television, which is supposedly telling the truth. You know, so 
That's cinema, I see. Uh, probably, so oh, you tell um, us. Uh, no, I just want to say, um, sometimes you also have to exaggerate to uh, tell a story right, um, to, uh, was heißt Stimmung? To transport atmosphere, the right yeah. atmosphere, for example, you you um, you tell a story and you say, yeah, there were 20 people yelling around and in fact it were uh, three people, but it felt like 20 people and you have to say 20 people so the people who read it can relate to the atmosphere that was there. And yeah, that's a bit of a lie, but it makes the story, uh, um, yeah, more rela relatable, uh, yeah. verständlich. Yeah. To, maybe to tell yeah. a lie, to tell a lie, to point to a truth, maybe. <laughs> also, es gibt ja diese Formulierung, uh, Übertreibung zur Veranschaulichung, exaggerating to make something clear. Uh, yeah. Das ist, glaube ich, die Übersetzung. That covers it pretty well. <laughs> so let's go into sp space. Into space, I mean, uh, well, uh, we told one of the teams that we could connect these three artists was space, room, uh, because the whole story about being an author, being authentic, or authenticity is coming to oneself, claiming, uh, claiming a room of your own, and being the being in the being the authority of yourself so uh, in a way to save yourself from society maybe it's like i'm the author of myself so uh, and in that you three have different styles again the, for example stephanie claims her own space uh, on mo mostly on digital media and you two as filmmakers as uh, have different styles actually uh, you're on the I mean we'll actually get to know your style this is your first <laughs> film and can you tell us a bit about your relationship with owning space and uh, creating a room for for yourself through art and and uh, all that actually connects uh, also resonates a lot with your film's script, having a woman wanting a room, which of course reminds us of Virginia Woolf's a room of one's own. So what is a room of your own to you? Uh, um, um, so while so while uh, working, like while working process or in general, what is a room? Well, working process as as an artist working process as a yeah uh well uh B but it also of course it has a uh, it has to be effective in that uh, uh, i mean art is usually a kind of a redemption for artists so also its relationship uh, to your life of course mm, uh um uh, so, um, hmm. uh, so my work, uh, is, uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, while while working, um, uh, to me it's the most important is the state of mind. Like, uh, I have to, uh, uh, you know, some somehow uh, I have to uh, mm, uh, think about just uh, not not don't think about other things. Uh, just think about uh, um, well, not think about results, not think about before uh, after what happens or uh, what it will be like. Like uh, to me, it's like I don't know if I'm as answering in the right way, but I'm as uh, answering about process. There is no right process. way. It's not yeah. Right. So um, wh while the process, I um, uh, what works for me, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's first. I don't have enough practice uh, to um, say, but from this fir first film. Uh, what work works for me is that to concentrate mainly uh, just uh, on the um, thing itself, on the on the um, uh, work itself, not about other things and not about uh, the things that will come afterwards. Uh, to be in the moment and to b try to be 100% uh, in the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, I need 
space, as I said, I need my, uh, my space bec only because um, uh, um, like when I uh, um, get uh, some impressions or emotions, uh, just to sort them out, I need some space and time to just sit and sort these things out, uh, so to function more um, after that uh, properly. Uh, that's the only reason, and some people don't really need it, and it's not like right way or wrong way. Uh, I'm just like this, uh, and. Um, <laughs> Um, hmm. But probably uh, you didn't have much pain for claiming your own space. Claiming, you know, um, um, I don't. Uh, yeah, um, uh, my sp claiming my space I on claiming my uh, my things like authorship, right? Or yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. Um, uh, mm, you know, uh, I don't uh, really. Uh, I, uh, uh, as I understand, um, like um, um, uh, I am. Um, so uh, another thing that works for me is that to not to think about myself that much. I like not to think about like uh, um, uh, for uh, not think. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like to be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to think about work itself, like if, a s for example, if someone gives you some advice or something, uh, you must not be like hesitant. Uh, like mm, I don't, mm, pff, I don't, uh, I don't know how to. Yeah, uh, well, just think about work and uh, wo or don't think about how much you put it in, because uh, uh, you know uh, when you think too much about yourself and your ego or something. Like that, uh, it's the work is damaged somehow. Uh, I think so. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. But um, mm, you you are just filter mm, in one kind. Uh, you must filter some things, all the um, suggestions, all, all the impressions. You are not alone. You uh, you are in the environment, in the society. Everything affects you. You are just filter, and this filter what comes out. It, it must be clean <laughs> to the maximum. So that uh, something will come out, and it will materialize, or whatever I'm talking, what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's uh, how I perceive it. Uh, that you are not, you are not alone, actually. Okay. Hey, Thank and you. your <laughs> main character, Manana, is also needing her space. She actually has her space. The husband is being kicked out of the bedroom. She doesn't sleep in the bed, but she she has that space, and then. She needs another space. So when you think back about her as a character, I mean, I don't know if you want to analyze her, but why does she need to go from one space to another? Uh, because, uh, you know, it's just her way of, right, her way of working. Like, um, everyone's way differs, I think, in some way. Uh, and uh, for her, she just requires new place to write a new part of the book, like another part, uh, because environment affects her. And when f the first half of the book she's writing about fa her family and she needs to be there and she was there for years, now she needs another place. She needs to touch the environment. She needs to um, touch things before they he she writes. That's her way. Stephanie, where do you write? Because I assume with Facebook posts, you could On do anywhere. On my smartphone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everywhere. But do you ever go back, have this retreat, this, I don't know, study place? No, but my, um, yeah, what I do is very impulsive and I don't really, that's why sometimes I, I don't, uh, f I feel like I don't have much in common with other writers because I really never sit somewhere and write. Just when I have to do the books, I have to clean out the Facebook things and copy paste and yeah, then I have to sit at home. But I was, uh, for example, um, in Morocco now with uh, a lot of friends and two of them were writers and they really stayed uh, in the house we rented and, and wrote and said, wow, they loved it because they, there's so much going on in their head and they're having adventures in their head. And I didn't work anything because I thought I'm missing out something if I stay in the house and not walk through the streets and look at all the things. So, yeah. So, but in a I'm sense, I'm not very disciplined and not sitting at home at my desk or something. I'm more running around. So maybe you're yeah. a street artist. I mean, yeah. no, but if you th really, I'm serious because when you think about space, we always think about kind of the writing room of the of the of the author. Um, but you're claiming another space, as Yesim also said, like yeah, you're claiming the whole world. 
Well, mm -hmm. but since the whole world is pretty big, you need to claim your space, but it's in the public space. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine or how do you think, okay, this is my space in the public space and you can join me, you can read my Facebook posts, but also this is my territory. Is that something that is a deal at all? Uh, sometimes I have to delete comments when they're very aggressive, but... Um, I also didn't plan to become so public, so I had also to get used to it, and, and now I um, I almost uh, don't delete anything anymore, because I got used to be so public, and um, I, I, I get a lot of shitstorm from right uh, from the right, right wing party initialized, because w uh, when I make jokes about them, and um, then there is this whole other Facebook world uh, on some days coming into my Facebook, all the... Um, Animal lovers and uh, um, I don't know. Uh, all some the people <laughs> will know what you're referring to. Maybe yeah, some yeah. people won't. What's with the animal lovers? Just very briefly. Uh, the last shitstorm I had was about me uh, torturing baby cats because I wrote it as a joke in an in an article in the newspapers, and the right wing party used this to make a shitstorm campaign against me because they said I'm torturing uh, baby cats. And then I had uh, yeah a shitstorm on all my social media presences. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, but um, and, and now since I got used to be a public person, I, I I kind of like it when these people are coming because I think ah now they're coming in my algorithm, and normally I don't see them, I don't I don't uh, talk to them, and if you don't block them, I I got used to uh, I, I found out if you don't block them, some of them are some of the Nazis. If you don't block them for a long time and sometimes answer their comments, they start to read you every and then, then suddenly they answer you if when you ask uh, does anyone know a nice restaurant then the, the suddenly they, they start to answer, yeah, I know one and then I have really like five Nazi followers now they changed um, from sending me death threats to uh, telling me about restaurants so they know <laughs> sorry. Yeah, um, I don't know. Actually, I don't follow them. I don't trust them so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because in your case, there's kind of there's an invasion of your space and a kind of a subtraction. Yeah, integrate them. Or I started to integrate them. Uh, a, f a few years ago, I, I blocked everyone, but now I... I started to, you know, like hug them and say, come because to my sp in space. in Aquarius, Kleber, that's basically also a f film, neighboring sounds in, in a sense as well, but Aquarius very kind of intensely about invasion of someone's public space uh, who also happens to be a, a, a writer. I mean, it's not so much that they're really inviting her or invading her writing space, but when you listen to these two stories, could you relate that back to what's going on in Aquarius? Yeah, Aquarius is basically about um, invasion. It's um it's almost like a, a Fort Apache kind of uh, Western situation, you know. There is the the apartment building, and then all these men trying to come in. And of course, people have written about the film with um, uh, a rape subtext. Um, Clara is the one holding out. She's a woman, of course. Uh, and all these men trying to come in, you know, through the window, through the door. Um, threatening her very politely uh, and then using some tools that the market uses to push her out and it's basically about the defense of of one's space basically uh, it's a it's a film in fact last night i said that um, i was talking to friends and i, I it reminded me that um, the very early <laughs> idea from Aquarius reminded me of the scene in Monty Python's The Meaning of Life when two men from the National Health Service, they knock on a man's door. The guy opens the door and they say, are you so and so? And he says, yes, I am. We have come to pick up your liver. And he says, I'm using it. So it's basically about getting something that that is being used, which is her place, her home, the home where she lived with her family, and, and the market wants it, and it wants now, and get out, and that's the film. Can we, can we say uh, Manana's husband is asking of her to leave her, to leave her liver, 
so in a way that in that he asks her I love you so much but let's burn this book it's <laughs> So how much of an invasion is going on there for you? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I know what you're asking. Like, um, because he somehow uh, is in between, he invades, but uh, he, he asks her uh, to write new thing and uh, he is ready to like give he her his room uh, and um, mm, but uh, of course it doesn't matter because it's about uh, um, like it's about uh, um, the thing like main thing for her is her book in at this period of time and he burns it so uh, <laughs> it's an invasion of course you know very but he still says I care about you so much but well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes but it's let's it's take your liver <laughs> yeah 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 uh, yeah somehow yes yes mm. so before we go on to the next subject I think there was a question over there so maybe we can do a quick round see if there are any quick comments or questions from the audience um, and then we can continue. I saw a, f a hand. You wanted to ask something? Okay. Maybe someone else does. If not, yes, over there. Yes, please. I think there's also a microphone coming your way. So please be a little bit patient. I don't know if it's on. Uh, I thought the whole the film, the subject of the film for me was uh, like metamorphosis. Uh, um, it seemed like there, there, that there was a kind of metamor metamorphological sort of process going on, and that's why I thought it's really interesting that Kafka was mentioned. That was I had to, like three things I just quickly wanted to say. That was I, th I thought it was very interesting this metamorphosis of. Um, how it seemed like at first, you know, the, the husband and the family were being conservative and um, your um, association as a, as a viewer, well, mine, I can only speak for me, but I felt, oh, you know, you, you were constantly switching the the, um, the script, the Stray book um, was very good in the way that the, your sympathies were changing from minute to minute, like, oh, her family are rejecting her and you sort of felt, you know, you really, I really wanted her to get away and go over this. The architecture was also really adding to this separation with the bridge, a fantastic location, and then she had to go across this bridge to get to the other place. And he thought, you know, her family in a way the baddies, and she's uh, trying to be an artist. And then, over the course of the film, for me, she became more. I thought, oh, she is kind of strange, and she is maybe mad. And then at the end, I thought she's ice cold. And then my sympathy was much more with the father by the end because I thought she really is cold, and that was really fascinating. And also, um, you know, the fact of the belief, like you know, people are always saying, "Oh, you're a genius," you know. And then, and then. A husband, and then th then the women. Strangely enough, the publishers were saying, "Well, it's pornography." Well, you thought maybe the women would be on on her side, but they weren't. And then all the time that guy was believing in her, and I thought it was just really interesting switch and change between belief and um, critic. Uh, you know, is it good or is it bad, or shall we publish it or not? And then um, by the end, um, you really think I really thought, oh, she is kind of like a vampire. And, and it was really interesting, just this this constant switching. And I thought it was a nice touch with the with the Kafka men the mention of Kafka, and also the humour that was really knife edge, where she started laughing, and you thought, you know, this is a knife edge. This, this is kind of she's it's kind of funny, but it really was a lot of tension. Uh, the whole Thank film. Thank you so uh, much. I yeah. mean, you're giving a whole review from the from the rear end of the room. Anna, would you uh, like to? No, th thank you so I much. Very much. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Um, and uh, sorry, my mobile was calling and I got distracted. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And um, uh, yes, uh, what about Kafka mentioning? Uh, it's uh, it's the same process that I told uh, you. It's like uh, um, uh, you know, I was at this place and I wanted to name some author, and what came in mind was Kafka, and I was like, yeah, it might be might be right choice, and I wrote Kafka, and then when um, I like when you uh, no, because one person asked me before about this Kafka, they 
uh, said that the, it has uh, like I I don't I don't draw any comparisons because you know it's Kafka like uh, <laughs> no but uh, um, I'm saying that uh, the f feeling was the same like uh, they mentioned metamorphosis and I was like ah yeah and uh, they asked that that's why you name uh, named it uh, uh, mentioned this name but I wasn't like really thinking about it but it happened somehow intention uh, intuitively and uh, yeah. Uh, it uh, now when I think about it, yeah, um, it like it's um, a little bit uh, um, like uh, ideally maybe uh, some. Uh, but it was the right choice to name maybe Kafka. It was yeah. a subconscious choice, yeah, 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 or maybe Kafka is your favorite uh, writer. Is, he is, yeah. Thinking about One the of best yeah. writer, yeah. Kafka. Yeah. So. Also, so I think this comment sort of brings us to another subject that you we wanted to discuss, which is also kind of. The woman as monster, it's not so much a scary mother, but it's maybe a film about the, this, the fright of women in general and creative women. Um, I mean, uh, um, women are usually considered, not usually, <laughs> normally considered mothers, and the film is title is Scary Mothers. And what makes a, a mother or a woman Scary. You know, I may sound stupid now, but um, uh, regarding the title, it happened the same way. It's like, uh, what should I name it? Scary mother. Ah, yeah, it sounds uh, like right. Like, and I did it. And then I, when I thought about it, yeah, uh, because it mm, it uh, it g gave me this same feeling th that I wanted it to have, uh, the film to have. Uh, to be kind of ironic, but uh, not that serious with a touch of irony, maybe. And this title gave me this, the exact feeling. So if something gives me this exact feeling that I want to, the film to have, uh, I just uh, stick with it. Like, yeah, it gave me the exact feeling. And I didn't really analyze it. But when I have to analyze it, like during these questions, uh, yeah, it has some mean meaning. Like, I don't know, he, she's a mother, but uh, people, <laughs> her family, uh, kids are somehow afraid of her or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's funny it title to me. So we, we have other scary women here on stage, like <laughs> Stephanie, is, is she's targeted a lot by men, uh, explicitly, actually, as a feminist author. Mm -hmm. And your character, uh, Clara, is also uh, attacked by, uh, let's say, by the patriarch. So let's talk a bit about uh, what's this scary woman, what makes a woman scary? Because your film also has connotations to genre cinema, horror cinema, and the ho genre horror cinema's main element is a murdered woman. So here we have a vampire woman instead. And Let's think a bit about uh, what makes a woman scary in your eyes. Let's start. Uh, with yeah, um, with my books, I, 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 I got more and more audience. At first, it was m more a uh, subcultural indie audience, and then I got um, recognized by a bigger audience in, in Austria and Germany. And uh, before, uh, with the first book, no one called me provocative or that I'm so scary or somehow so hardcore. Yeah, and and uh, I'm quite surprised uh, what what uh, what is um, what people uh, see as provocative when you do it as a woman because I don't see myself as that provocative. I actually make jokes most of the time, and I'm actually really nice. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, and and yeah, I, I I I don't I I don't mean to be so provocative, and I was really surprised with with um, yeah uh, what uh, what people see as provocative when a woman does it, like writing about drinking cans of beer or something. I mean, I I wouldn't think that a girl who's drinking beer that this is a provocation. Two thousand eighteen. But uh, the the German Feuilleton, for and example, in, decides Europe, that they write, in and she's drinking beer like a man. And, uh, I mean, really, the intellectual uh, Feuilletons in in Germany wrote this, and yeah, yeah, I'm uh, still quite surprised what what is provocative, what is seen as provocative when I do it. Yeah, just some normal abortion jokes or something, and everybody's <laughs> like, "Wow, so provocative." Yeah. 
it shouldn't be this easy you say <laughs> i i really like the title uh, scary mother um in it uh, as soon as um i heard about the film for the first time i i thought it was very the it was a very good timing for that title because it reminded me of this moment political moment when <laughs> the president of the United States calls women uh, sca uh, nasty, nasty woman, mm. um, and and in that sense, it has an interesting connection culturally and politically with what's going on now. <coughs> but in my film, um, I never saw my character as scary. I basically wrote this film. Um, I felt very comfortable writing that character because. Again, going back to the beginning of our discussion, uh, that I know that character very well. She's she's my mother. My mother died at 54, and uh, the film is is almost like um, uh, a, a, a fictional projection through cinema of what she would be at at 65 or 67 years old. And um, it actually took me some time to say that publicly. Uh, I think I think it was two months into the the film had its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. It was in May. I think it was only in September that I started uh, to openly say that it, it's uh, it's an artistic uh, representation of of my mother. And um, and I and I just wrote um, the basic things that you write when you're writing fiction, which is tension. Uh, and a lot of the tension comes from what men expect women to do in their in their minds it, it has nothing to do with the woman but it, it it's really about what men expect women to behave and and that generates tension in my film because Clara does not do what some some of the men expect her to do she doesn't behave like a normal uh, woman and uh, and that was the main source of tension in the film. So, a woman uh, owning uh, her own authorship, her own authority is always maybe in Clara's case it's not scary, but still daring uh, somehow. Yeah, the somebody could, could say that she's scary. Uh, some of those men, but but the most important thing is for me she was never scary she's actually uh, a source of um, affection and friendship and understanding and love and and then sometimes she tells somebody to fuck off and but that only at the right time in 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 the given situation in the film something that we found remarkable is that actually we have three generations of women being depicted in your work so they could be maybe grandmother daughter and, and, and granddaughter in a way from one another. Um, but they're, they're within their own space, they're acting the same. They're taking kind of, their, they're claiming their own agency. So that's probably the momentum that we're catching right now that people find terrifying or scary. Um, but that's sort of popping up in society. Um, we've been talking for a very long time so I'm gonna look into the audience one last last time if there are any pressing questions or comments left and otherwise we can discuss later on. And I want to ask you the question, do you imagine an audience when you create and direct your film? Um, no, no, uh, I, I do not. Um, but I'm not saying that I'm doing films for myself or something. Uh, no, um, because uh, I don't really enjoy watching them. I enjoy doing it, like process. And um, of course, I uh, I do it for audience, but I don't really think about it because it. Um, I don't know. It's really hard uh, to me uh, to uh, these impressions and stuff. And st uh, positive is hard. Negative is hard. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, so mm, yeah, I don't. I don't think so about yeah. The theme of audience is almost bringing us full circle to yesterday's discussion. So I can keep up the, the book again. Go and buy it. Um, I think before we're going to thank our guests, 
uh, you're going to tell us something about tomorrow's program. Oh, mm, tomorrow we have... Because you have to come back. <laughs> we have uh, two other great films. Uh, one of them is The Big House. It's an uh, observational uh, film. It's a documentary uh, pretending not to be commenting on something, but actually saying a lot. Uh, it takes place one year before Trump's uh, election in America's biggest football team. And it's been, it hasn't been just made, made just by one director, but by a group of students, academics, and it just depicts, without saying anything, it just, it just depicts or just uh, reports what's going on in this stadium. And you will, be, you will be surprised to see how much it manages to say about America uh, in that. And before that, we, we will also show a short film, uh, which, is a, which has a very sharp uh, political statement by using some analog film material. So I think there will be a heated discussion about it all tomorrow. So join us again tomorrow. <coughs> Take your friends and neighbors. Thank you, Yasim. It was a pleasure co-moderating here with you tonight. And please join me in thanking our guests, uh, Kleber Mendoncha Filio, mm -hmm. Stephanie Sagnagel, and of course, Anna Urujatsi, director of Scary Thank Mother. Thank you so much for being here and staying. <laughs> Thank you.